this is funny. We did it. We, we were trying to do that together. Uh, Can't you do it by yourself now? Just welcome stop. to the <laughs> Welcome to the Brazilianitos podcast. I'm Desi. I'm Caro. And I'm Stacy. <laughs> nice. Um, okay, so what I want to talk about today. I have to tell you guys a quick story. So the other day I was on TikTok. Not the other day, probably a couple of months ago. And I was looking at this TikTok of this dude that did braids. And he mm-hmm. was like phenomenal at it. And then I was reading the comments and a bunch of girls were like, oh yeah, no, we don't support him anymore because he's a colorist. He's a colorist. Wait, was the guy black or I white? literally cannot remember. But I was like, what the heck is colorist? Oh. I had no idea. I never heard that word in my life. Uh-huh. So then that's when I started looking it up. I was like, colorist. People that like discriminate based on like the shade, the shade of your skin color. Yeah. And then I was like, we're adding more to this. And then I was like, and now it's personal. Yeah. Now, this, yeah. now this is, per- anyway. So I wanted to talk about that today because I, this is a new topic for me and that I'm still learning about. So we have some questions from Caro. Yeah. So we, well, we were talking about that topic and we're just like, we have to kind of bring light to it a little bit more because I feel like it's something that is in our cultures so deeply yeah but also like you ignore it because it's like oh maybe it's a topic that maybe we don't talk about so um on our instagram stories we asked a couple questions and there weren't like crazy questions i literally made them up as i was going so um because i just wanted to see uh yeah where people were at if they've ever had ever heard that a term before so my first question that I asked which is kind of weird the reason why I like the first question but I asked just out of curiosity have any of you used uh, used skin products to lighten your skin color and the reason why I asked that first is because it, like the time I heard colors and was actually I was watching an, a documentary about China and this is a long time ago I couldn't look it up because I mm. didn't know what it was called but they were actually saying how like Poor people in China are darker skinned because they work out in the fields. Now, I don't know what type region of China I'm talking about, you know, nothing. But I was just saying how like in some cultures, the lighter you are, it's like a, like the better status that you have in society, make you more, more financially stable, you know, work out in the fields. That means you have a good job. It's kind of stupid reasons, but that's just like how the documentary, documentary was talking about. And so... That was like the first thing that came up. And well, and it's ask. like how society views people. Like mm-hmm. if you're a little bit dark, you can't. You're not rich. You're not like deserving, or because you work too much, or like you're supposed to work. Like because of your color, there's a connotation to who you are. It's crazy. Yeah, it's so weird. And so a lot of people said no, which it was kind of. I guess you could say expected, especially people in the U.S. since tanning is popular. Mm -hmm. So it's like the opposite opposite. of um, skin lightening products. I did have one girl say that, yeah, but for certain parts of the body. I was going to say for my armpits, yes, I have. (laughs) (laughs) I never even thought about that. I haven't either. Oh, it's the greatest thing. But the thing is, most products for like lining armpits and stuff are Asian. Mm -hmm. It goes together with what you were saying. Yeah, so, I mean, most people said no, but I feel like if we were in different parts of the world, it'd be very different. Yeah. They're very different responses. Yeah. Um, the other question was, have you ever heard of colorism? 65% people said yes, 29% said no, and 6% said kinda, not really. I'm kind of like on the same boat. I've never heard of that term. And this is like out of 300 people, okay? So. Right. <laughs> yeah, but that's a lot. That's I have, a I've amount. never heard of that you term You get 300 either. people to vote on your stories? I'm jealous. I get like six. I, I mean, I probably had a little bit less than that. <laughs> like nobody cares. <laughs> like, damn, you're popular. I don't um, know, I've never used any lightning products, but it's interesting that you kind of talk about um, like how in Asia they do that because I went to high school with some Korean girls and it was funny because during our lunch break, we had this like really cool patio with grass and stuff. So me and my friends would always literally just go lay on the grass. We'd like roll up our our like pant legs and like try to get as much sun as possible and the korean girls who are like my really good friends are like no no no, we don't go out there and i was like come like feel the sunshine it feels so good and they're like no 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 and they're like in the shade umbrella hood up and i'm like what and, and they it's just like hot outside hot outside it's, it's like the sun is the enemy <laughs> yeah and they're like granted they're very fair so i'm like yeah, they could get yeah. some burnt but it's like anything to not be brown and i'm mm. like interesting because i one 
am brown and I'm like dark brown. Brown's I've been Senoritas. dark brown my whole life. I mean, not dark dark. I am but, like, so white now that I'm looking at myself right there. I'm like <laughs> see through. We've got all the shades for you. Um, What's going on? To me, it's like. I was almost a little bit offended that people didn't want to be brown because I'm like, brown is the best. Right, yeah. Like, why would you not want to be tan and beautiful like me, you know? And that's the thing. I, some people, they're not racist. Yeah. But it's they're like, colorist. Like, yeah. I'm not racist against people of color, but I would hate to be a little darker. Or, yeah. That's mm-hmm. pretty crazy. Yeah. Because it's, is it racism? I think it is. But, I mean, again, I guess that's a difference. I think to me... And I asked this, this is another question I asked, which one's worse, being racist or being colorist? Obviously, both are bad. Mm -hmm. Don't be any of those. Right. (laughs) If you are, humble yourself and change. Check yourself. Yeah. Check yourself. But I feel colorism is slightly worse because it's like with your own people that you're prejudiced against or you treat them as if they were maybe a different race or a different you know right like we look alike but you're just a bit darker we, than say, so i'm better than we you come like, that's from the, the same town we yeah. go to the same yeah. school we have the same school education Ancestors. the same language everything <laughs> the same yeah. listen to the same music go to the same grocery store but i see you less than me because you're darker that's crazy and sometimes that's you're just a bit darker yeah that's it. i i think and again everyone's obviously everyone can have their own opinion and i think there's not like a right or wrong in this situation i just see it almost like just harder to understand because i'm like you're it's your own people it's your rasa yeah. right yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like boggles my mind that people can see other like in my case mexicans other mexicans especially natives right mm-hmm. that have you know more distinct features as well and they just treat them like crap even if they have the same amount of money all that stuff Really sad. Yeah. Um, the other question I asked was, were you ever told as a child to stay out of the sun so you don't get dark or play out in the sun? I still get <laughs> told that. <laughs> Not as a child, as a 28-year-old, a 28-year-old adult, I'm, I don't know, I'm also obsessed with the sun. Like, yeah. genuinely obsessed with it. Like, sun sun's out, good. I'm out. Sun's like, good for you. The hotter, darker, I, I like... In the summer, I'm outside every single day laying out. And then people are like, my mom, my mom's like, whatever. But she's just like, take care of your skin. Don't mm-hmm. get skin cancer. But yeah. Um, so but yeah, there are people like, they're like, estas muy negrita. Estas mm-hmm. muy negrita. Like you're doing too much. Estas muy negrita. Yeah. Like demasiado. Like stop. And I'm like, mm, the darker, the better for me. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So yeah, no, it's to this day. Yeah. So, I, I've never been told that, but I've heard it for other people and my friends. Like I... It's conversations I've heard for sure. Mm-hmm. I just, I've never been told not to, but. I've been told that. Mm-hmm. Like when I was younger, they're like, oh, like stay inside or, para que no te pegue el sol. Mm-hmm. So like sun doesn't hit you. And I think at first I thought of it as just for sunburn, mm-hmm. right? But maybe, I never asked my parents or anyone that told me that. But it's just like things, like 44% said yes and 56 percent said no so more people were told no Uh than yes and so it's just like huh it's maybe again a cultural thing a thing like you worry about your physical appearance more than you but normal yeah um so again they just told us to stay out of the sun and the sun's good so that's very normal (laughs) to hear like growing up in brazil and having a lot of sun and going to the beach a lot like that's definitely a phrase i heard a lot growing but again up. like brazil when i think of brazil mm-hmm. i've never been there but i think of hot mm-hmm. guatemala hot mexico hot. like what are you gonna do <laughs> it's there yeah and the thing is i think most people especially nowadays i can't speak for everyone but i it's almost like what stacy was saying like we love being a little darker feeling like we're you look healthier when you're in the sun. Like, you um, just look better. You look like, fitter. You yeah. look, <laughs> muscles are more, like, defined. And, Everything is but better. The, but the problem with colorism is there's a limit to how dark you can get. Like, yeah, go in the sun, get tan, look healthy or whatever, but Not too don't dark. overdo it. <laughs> don't get too dark, you know. So, I've definitely heard that before. Well, and why do you think that is? Like, why is... Again, I guess we. I mean, there's there's tons of there's tons of reasons why this could be, and I, I'm not a historian, but and I can't say, but it's like, you look at the United States. It's like black people were slaves, and these slaves 
these people from Africa that were enslaved also came to like the Caribbean. They some ended up in Central America. Like, mm -hmm. and to them, like it's just been d looked down upon, and it's so stupid because I now, like we were saying, like, no offense, but like white girls are out there tanning, getting just as dark as me, yeah. and I'm like, okay, like. And that scene you. is, like, more acceptable. Oh, right. Like, oh, yeah. like, I was at the gym the other day. Uh -huh. Literally. A girl was wearing a sports bra. So I could see her stomach. And, like, I kid you not, she was darker than me. <laughs> she was darker than me. And I was like, <laughs> I know it's winter, so I'm not, like, the darkest I can get. But it's like, how is that acceptable for you? It's almost like blackface to me. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But there's so I many reasons why this from. could be. Mm -hmm. In the, like, LDS world, it's like brown skin was looked up, looked at as a curse or mm -hmm. whatever. I don't know. I don't know too much about that. Yeah. I'm not, I, that one's... I didn't really read the book a lot, but... <laughs> I don't know too much about That's that. a whole other topic, I guess, because it obviously involves religion mm -hmm. and yeah. and stuff. But, again, it's just, like, part of history. Like, darkness was seen as bad. And so a lot of people were told too, like, oh, you have to mix with this race mm -hmm. to make them better, to make them more right. holy, to make them acceptable. And that just boggles my mind. It but bothers me so much. It's I could literally write a book on this <laughs> about like how the indigenous are treated in Guatemala because mm -hmm. they are darker and they are like not as mixed with European. And it's like it's so stupid because I'm like, how are you one racist towards the people that are like your antepasados, ancestors, literally ancestors built the country you. you live in, yeah. and not only that, but it's like you look at these like Mayans, like the Mayans and the Incas and the Aztec, like these ancient civilizations were not only some of the coolest but most like innovative civilizations that have ever existed. Like there are things that these guys came up with, these that these guys studied that we to this day use. So it's like, where is the respect? Like mm -hmm. what? It, Oh, I'm telling you, I could write a book on this because, and I used to think the same as like, oh, los indios. Like, mm -hmm. los, and like, I think in Guatemala now, it's illegal to say indio, like to call somebody that. Wow, because that's crazy. It was like getting get out of hand. Mm -hmm. Like, um, wow. and like, we were all kind of guilty of it. We like thought less of them. And I'm like, no, like, well, and honestly, I should, I don't know, but it's like, I'm just as dark as them. Mm -hmm. Granted, like, I, I'm, I lived in the city. I'm from the city. My parents, whatever. It's like, no one ever discriminated against me, but it's like I'm I'm the same. Mm -hmm. I'm coming from the same people. Like yeah, but it's just that what you were told, like oh, like those are the Indios. Mm -hmm. But you guys, there's are a the lot same. of like separations. Yeah, tons. We, I mean, so, I was it's awful. Taught that too. I mean, you think of all the <coughs> the novelas that we grew up with, the movies, <coughs> the help, the maids were always dark. I've never right. seen a light skinned maid. In Literally, the all the Mexican novellas, all the main characters are white girls. Mm -hmm. White girls. Redheads, blue eyes, right. blonde hair. So, growing up in Brazil, I've never, like, never left my country until I was 17. Mm -hmm. And in Brazil, there's a lot of diversity, right? It's a little bit different compared to, like, other countries in South mm -hmm. America. I feel like some smaller countries, Don't there's happen. more of a look. And Brazil, you get everything. Like you could look like anyone Asian, like you can look like be anyone Brazilian. And, be Brazilian. and I yeah. know that Mexicans can look like anyone and be Mexicans, right? <laughs> it's not just Brazil, but Brazil, it's very like that. So I grew up being around a lot of different people. And then it was interesting because I watching mainstream Mexican entertainment, which was really big in Brazil. Mm. Um, I've, I grew up thinking Mexicans, Mexicans were right. White, <laughs> for real. Because I've never seen a Mexican in my whole life. Uh-huh. And all of these shows that I was watching, I was like, oh yeah, they're white. Like, they're whiter than Brazilians are. And then the first time I've seen a Mexican was when I moved to the United States. And I was like, <laughs> you know, like mm. what if that's not what you look like on TV. You <laughs> guys don't look like everyone on TV. What's going on? And that like little, I know it sounds so like, I sound so uneducated, but that's what I saw. And I was in my own world, my own country being like 15 yeah, years old. You know, I wasn't like, aware of a lot, I guess. Okay, I didn't know Polynesians existed until right, I was me neither. Talk. Had no idea what Polynesians were. <laughs> well, when Polynesians. I found out about them, I was like, they are the chosen people. They are like, the most beautiful the coolest people. people ever. They're like from the islands. Like, anyway, yeah, you don't exactly. learn about them. No, I didn't know. No one teaches you about them in, no. in school. Sorry. But I didn't know. I For yeah. me, Mexicans are right until I saw a Mexican and I started looking like, oh, now I can tell who's Mexican. There's a, a, a look to look for. And as... 
like the same with other kinds of people from other countries. Like people carry their look in the DNA, mm -hmm. you know. And now I can tell. I'm like, oh. I know that's a Mexican. And before I was like so unaware okay. because of entertainment. I, they don't show. They don't. In Guatemala, they'd have like billboards for private schools and they would put the blonde kids. Right. I'm like, Cause it's I bet nice you, you have two blonde kids in your right. entire school, but they made your billboard. They're like, the minority. On, get real, bro. Like, <laughs> that's insane. We're all brown. Like, don't be ashamed of that. Yes. See, Ugh. colorism is so real. Everywhere. Everywhere. Okay, I guess that's a good way to go into this other question. I forgot we were going to question. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, <laughs> now I'm, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Which is, were you able, or sorry, were you ever told to marry white or Ugh. someone with lighter skin to better the race? Mejorar la raza? Girl, bye. I think I, I was never taught that, but it was like, oh, like people Heard do us. this to yeah. mejorar la raza. And I was just like, what? And yeah. like, why is this a normal conversation? I get right so now? angry when people say that mm -hmm. now. Because because it's like a lot of my cousins married white boys and like that comment just kind of gets thrown around not necessarily like do it or you did this but it's just like that phrase like gets thrown around like oh mejorar la raza like since when is like blue eyes the standard we're going for right or like, or grandmas, like grandmas will say like oh just give me like a white little like nieto i'm like <laughs> or my grandma's like no te cases con un negrito like What? This isn't funny. No. <laughs> it's like funny because we've all heard we've it. We've all, and, and, it's, we've, and it's haven't been talked about. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and again, I think it's just something, and I don't know, maybe this is just my thoughts. I'm like, we've always been so focused off on like American history of like white mm -hmm. versus black. Yeah. But it's like, all right, we've, I'm not saying that we've given it enough attention because I think it's something that we have to continue learning about. But it's like, okay, now let's like shift the focus a little bit on our own people. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I remember when the whole George Floyd happened, there was a lot of posts. I follow a lot of like Mexican accounts or Spanish accounts and they're like, hey, like, yeah, this is going on in the US, but let's look into our own people. Like, let's look like we're all being hypocrites saying like, oh, yeah, like George Floyd and all this stuff and like white people are racist or whatever. But it's like, let's look at our own people, like our own countries right. and see that there's a, a, a deep problem mm -hmm. <laughs> because um the one story that stood out to me and i should have looked up her name but she was the actress in roma that movie that came out i think 2017 yes please um roma uh and it was directed again by a, a, a mexican director as well and i should have looked up the name anyway so she got nominated for an oscar and she was the first like native um what it, could you say like native Mexican? Yalitza Aparicio. I think so. Is that her name? It's what is it? Yalitza. Yalitza. Yeah, Yalitza. She, which is, she's so cute. Was her first movie ever as well. Um. Anyways, there was a lot of backlash in Mexico because a lot of there was this one big TV commentator that was caught talking smack on her at a restaurant, saying like that India doesn't be, like belong there, like. The harshest things, and hopefully I can find the clip because I'm like, this is something that needs to be like talked about. And it's like, all you think of Hollywood, why is it always just white? Like white, and I think this is why representation matters. Right? Representation does matter. Wakanda, whatever. I don't care if you don't like Marvel or not, but the way that Black Panther has brought representation, and especially like the Hispanic, the Latino community in this new movie chills um i, I was crying in the movie theater because it's yes. on disney plus now. okay we'll oh. watch it we'll watch it because <laughs> i literally cried watching that because the first like guatemalan woman was in like a mainstream superhero movie that's like unheard of and it's like right. that's me hint it right there like well and the main guy i'm crying the main guy <laughs> the notch huerta i believe that's his name he's been in narcos as well he's in an interview and he says that like it's so nice to have a role of a superhero where right. he's been like in other roles he's been a criminal uh you know mm. not, not looked down upon just like a bad guy and now you see a brown man as a hero right with you know what I mean? on his feet with or like the good guy <laughs> and yeah. i keep getting chills so it's just like i don't know i guess we can talk about this forever but it's just again representation matters and it's just something that we have to change I think. yeah I think that's the yeah. most important part is like check ourselves because it's like I I had to do a lot of like self checks and realize that I was also kind of participating in the conversations where we look down upon indigenous people in Guatemala and it's like again you have 
like you gotta be respectful of all people like mm-hmm. all people are capable like mm-hmm. doesn't matter what your skin color is how tall you are what your accent is like what you like nothing like every person's still capable of being successful and like everybody has something to teach you so it's like yeah and i think the change you know where it starts in my opinion because like i think it's part of human nature to not want something that nobody wants if something like even if it's not skin color or about humans right like if there's a cupcake even though it looks good and you know there's like it's well made like it has frosting like Mm -hmm. it's a good looking cupcake if everyone around is like that cupcake does not taste good (laughs) <laughs> like in our brains we start to believe that right. and I think that's where it all starts and so I think for me like where change happens is where appreciation starts because mm-hmm. like you're not you're never going to appreciate something you don't understand right especially it's, if it's been like infused in your brain from the day you were born that something is not good mm-hmm. so it's almost like a, a like reverse brainwash you kind of have a, to do yeah and it's a generational yeah. shift that yeah. we who are the up and coming generation. I feel like we're the ones that are, you know, having kids and like teaching the next generation. Like we're the ones that have to break that cycle. Yeah. We're the ones that have to, yeah, not just not discriminate, but appreciate. Learn to appreciate. So especially, educate yourself. Yeah. Especially the people you come from, like yes. the people you share a country with. Like mm-hmm. they are in, in some way a family, you know, it's like, and in, in when we teach our children that and like, I know I'm teachers, so it's like, I can, maybe like I, I for sure teach respect towards everybody you know and so it's like we're the ones that have to do it because our parents like <laughs> I know that there are conversations I have with my parents where I'm like hey these things that we've been saying as a family are wrong and we need to change that like mm-hmm. so like we can still affect our parents I don't know how much we can affect our grandparents because at this point I mean some <laughs> have passed and some are yeah. just old and whatever just sat in their way but yes these are the generational generational shifts that we have to like sh- Ca- like it's do, on us. Cause, it's on us yeah. to teach that mm-hmm. and to realize that colorism is so real. Yeah. And like, as I was saying in the beginning, I'm like, this is a personal thing because like growing up in what they like, the stereotypical like city girl from Guatemala is much lighter than I am. And like, I always looked different. Mm-hmm. Like I was always darker with the big curly hair, taller than everyone. And it's like, like I said, I think I said earlier, like, luckily I don't think I was ever discriminated or at least I didn't notice, mm-hmm. but it's like, I'm, my nickname is Nanedita and I love that nickname and I'm not offended by it and I don't think anybody should be because I know it comes from a place of love, but it's like, I had to like learn that for myself that I'm like, okay, having brown skin is beautiful. Being brown is so rad. And mm-hmm. like a lot of people, not that they don't think that, but it's important for us to spread that idea. Like, mm-hmm. being brown is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter what shade. Mm-mm. It could be light brown, dark brown. You could be white, and it's like, I don't know where I was going with that. But like, no, but well, that, I, think, I think that's really <laughs> right. Like, it just again, I guess it's just one of those things of being a human. We're imperfect. I don't know where in history it all just fell apart, <laughs> really. But it's like, yeah. when did we start comparing ourselves because of our skin color and putting ourselves in different parts of society because of our skin color? You know what I mean? And I think it's something that we will always con- like continuously try to change and fight for because I don't know if everyone can c- like unite with this mindset of like, I'm not going to judge you because you're darker than me. Yeah. It would literally take miracles every day for people right. not to think and like it's, that. And it's never going to happen 100%, right? No. Like, yeah. humans are not perfect. But I think I think the reason why colorism is so big is because it's within brown people. And brown people are literally half. Yeah. Like, you're not black. Mm-mm. You're not white. Mm-hmm. And so you kind of, like, in the middle, and when it comes to filling out your form at the medical at the doctor's office about what you are what race you are you're like i literally have to mark white yeah same. because the, the, what are we well there's like i'm always confused by that when they're I asking you white. it's like what's your race and then latino not on that, that was one. one time i was like pacific island you have to put other <laughs> gonna claim this. and then in the next one it's like what's your ethnicity latino and i'm right. like can somebody explain to me the difference maybe i'm just dumb and i don't know i've been friends, explained but. it several times and it just doesn't like Clearly. My understanding is that ethnicity is where you're actually from and race is what you are. So, like, you can be white but be Latino. Mm-hmm. Right. Right? Yeah. But I just don't like that there's not an option for us because we're not white. 
What is our race? Because, I mean, let's say, like, let's just speak general terms. Like, Mexico wasn't... Brown? Or, <laughs> is that race? No. What is it? Like, Mexico was invaded by Spain, right? So I'm like, I have Spanish right. mm-hmm. and native right. Right. in me. That's yeah. general speak. Me I too. could have parts from other places, right? I feel like most but Latinos Brazil, are, mm-hmm. for sure, I would guess black. But right. then what's the other part? Also Italy, European. Portuguese, yeah. Europe, a lot of European. Mm-hmm. Okay. Germans. Germans, yeah. Japanese. Oh, yeah. My dad always says this, and it's probably like cliche and silly, but I love it. But he's always like, there are different ethnicities. There's like a bunch of them wherever you're from, but race, there's only one, and it's the human race. And, right. like, and I've heard that phrase, and it is silly and cliche because whatever, but it's true. Mm-hmm. Like, at the end of the day, we are all humans, and it's funny. Coming to America and like integrating our lives with like white people, it's so funny to me. Sometimes I'll have conversations with my friends, and I'm like, okay. We can't, we come from totally different parts of the world, speaking a different language, but we kind of have the same life. Like the experiences yeah, we go the through, human experience, it, the, ex, like the feelings yeah. we have during high school, and like the experiences we go through. We all go through our first kiss. We all go through like embarrassing moments. So it's like there is so much that unites us mm-hmm. that why are we picking apart at the tiny little differences that really aren't even don't make yeah. us different. Right. I think. Totally agree with you. I do understand from a medical point of view that they do studies based on race and genetics change. And that I think mm-hmm. it's, it's important for them to run studies based on like, okay, so black people are more prone to oh, this. Yeah. White people are more, like, I think that's obviously well, we come so important. from different parts of the world. We've adapted. And, that, and that's exactly what skin color is. It's an adaptation, an adaptation to how close yeah. we are to the equator. So it's like right. us who were Latinos, we come from Central America much closer to the equator. Africa, the ones that are closer to the equator, we tend to be darker because we've adapted to how much sun we're getting where you go north to like Scandinavian countries. People are white because they don't need the protection in there. Right. Epidermis, is that the word? And as much as we... Trying to sound photosynthesis. (laughs) That sounds smart. (laughs) That sounds photosynthesis. (laughs) I think as much as we like to blame the old generation for it, like the effects of it are so lingering. Mm. Because if we have been affected by it, unless you really resolve every single trauma, like things get passed on through DNA as well. Like mm-hmm. even your own traumas. Like it's so deep within us, mm-hmm. the history. It's like, yeah, we can blame generations of the past and we know that it's on us. But like I have a, and I've shared this with you guys. I have a person that's really close to me that when he was little, he will get tan and get really, really dark every time we'll go to the beach. And he will feel so ashamed. Like the beach was his favorite place. Like he will go have so much fun, get so dark, never think about it once. And as soon as the next day came and he had to go to school the next day in Brazil where people are so diverse, right? It's mm-hmm. crazy. He didn't feel like he belonged and he didn't want to be made fun of and be called, oh, like you're too dark. Like So he will literally come back from the beach after having the best time ever and literally scrub his skin in the shower to not like retain the darkness of the sun of like the day that he tan like that is so deep in his like conviction of the world and it's not an old generation problem it's right now yeah you know so it's like there's so much work to be done and it can feel really overwhelming but we're getting there because I yeah. think it starts with conversation. It does. Yeah. And and something that um, I think I'm really lucky because I, while I'm really dark and that could be like a sore topic for me, it could be like, oh, like I would never fit in, whatever. It never, I don't have any negativity or towards myself because my dad is also like darker Mm-hmm. Latino and his nickname is El Negro and everybody calls him El Negro. His friends like Negro, El Negro, El Negro. And he wears it with so much pride that he's like, hell yeah, I'm El Negro. Like, and he wants everybody to be like, right. El Negro. I love that. And he like instilled that upon me. He's like, yo soy El Negro y tú soy La Negrita. Like, La Negrita. And I'm like, yeah, yo soy La Negrita. <laughs> and it's like, I love it. Like, I, I think I was, t- I don't know, but my mom of her siblings, it's funny because my mom's not as dark as me, but she is tan and her siblings are a lot lighter. And so in her family, her immediate family, she was an Negrita, and they call her that sometimes, and I, like, kind of get jealous. I'm like, uh-uh, there's one Negrita, and it's me. That's me. Like, nobody else can be La Negrita. That's well, and, and that's another thing, too. Within your own family, there's going to be different shades of darkness. Like, mm-hmm. my sister's so white. Yeah. 
Yeah. The whitest. Blonde with curly hair. Mm-hmm. And I came out completely different. And I've seen, like, I will go places with her and, like, go to stores and stuff. And I could tell people would treat her way better than me. I'm her sister. Yeah. And sometimes people thought I was her friend. And he, she would get the best treatment at the store. It's insane. Yeah. And I've, so I've noticed good. that. And so I think that's a lot more common in our own countries back mm-hmm. home. Yeah. Because I even mentioned to you guys that, like, I remember moving to the United States and hearing a lot from white people. Oh my gosh, you're so beautiful. Your oh, your skin yeah. color is so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Like they say that a lot. Oh, tons. Mm-hmm. And you're like, thank you. For the first time ever, someone <laughs> appreciates me. Says something like that because yeah. you you will never hear that coming in Brazil. Oh my gosh, your color so, like you're dark. You're so it's like you okay. Why are you saying that? Yeah. It, it's so weird to me to hear that. Here, yeah, but I appreciate it. Yeah, but the colorism is way worse back in our own country. Oh, yeah. I can yeah. literally count probably less than like ten fingers that like amount of like racist experiences I've had in the U.S. compared to the experiences mm-hmm. I know I would have had in Mexico if I would have stayed there. Mm-hmm. And stayed this color. You know what I mean? Right. And, like, I see f- pictures of friends that I grew up with over there. And they're all, they call them, I mean, they don't call themselves white Mexicans. But in Mexico, that's why they, what you call mm-hmm. white Mexicans, right? And there's only one that's, like, slightly darker. And she just doesn't get darker than that, you know? So it's just, like, I never, I don't talk to any of them or anything like that. But I can, like, it's just interesting to see the dynamic that I'm, like, why are people so scared of getting dark? Like, you have all the money or whatever, but you're like, no, I cannot look like that. Mm -hmm. You know? And so I asked my mom, too. I'm like, hey, when did I get dark? Because if you see baby pictures of me, I'm white. Like, I'm light. Light Light skin. And she's like, "Uh, well, when we moved to Querétaro, which is like six years after, like, living in Mexico City where I was born, moved to Querétaro, I guess I was just outside more and my skin just got darker and it just stayed like that. But she's like... But in Mexico, like, she considers herself a morena clara, which my mom is, I think, is not morena at all. Mm, She's white. (laughs) She's white with brown hair and brown eyes. But she is morena clara in Mexico. So I'm like, okay, so then I'm morena, like, obscura. Mm -hmm. And so there's just, like, different levels within that same shade of brown, I guess you could say. But it's, like, like, they're way of measuring color is so different than how we measure color here like what's dark over here is like super dark over yeah, there it's a completely <laughs> different understanding of it's, color yeah. yeah i guess it's just like a lot of and i know like if i ever were to live there again it would be culture shock you know because okay. i don't know how people would treat me i'm like mm-hmm. will i get worse treatment in my own country than in the u.s right where like supposedly everyone's racist they're not everyone is right but it's just interesting how yeah. our lives could have been different if or i guess maybe i'm just speaking for myself if our my life would have been different if i would have been like raised there and grew well, up there it's more. interesting that you you say that like i wonder what my life could have been because after being here for eight years i went back to visit brazil and it was the biggest culture shock for me yeah. <laughs> because I know where I'm from. I know how much money I make. You know, I know how educated I am. Mm-hmm. Like, I know those things about myself. But in Brazil, people assume you don't have any of that just because you're morena. That's crazy. And it drives me insane because I, I feel that. so undervalued. And like, like, they will only treat you good if they say that you're wearing like an expensive marcas right marcas exactly like it's like oh okay she's morena but she's rich she's wearing now Gucci. she deserves what? the treatment yeah so like if i were, we're to just so... like Duh. and again this is not i mean i we grew up hearing that but it's still going on no it, last year i was there and that's how i felt oh my gosh that yeah makes me so and it was mad. funny because i was with my boyfriend at the time speaking english a lot yeah. and I, I could see in people's faces how they're like so confused like she's speaking English, but she's morena <gasps> kind of thing and like no one nobody said I anything die. yeah nobody said anything to my face but i could totally like tell the energy Their vibe. And how people are looking they're so confused like oh my gosh like <laughs> oh my gosh people are yeah. the worst and honestly and that and that is that is how we mejorar la raza mm-hmm. 
by Very changing simple. that mindset, mm-hmm. by changing that mindset and having respect for all people yes. and not treating somebody like crap when they're just a little bit darker. <laughs> that's how I mejorar la raza. That's insane. Not by yeah. having half white babies. No. <laughs> If you're gonna have half white babies and and (laughs) raise them the way you think, then you're empeorando la raza. Exactly. Because then they're gonna be half, but they're gonna think that they're fighting somebody today. Yeah. I want, like, I I mean, not that I'm expecting this, but I'm like, oh, it'll be funny if someone ever were to ask me, like, oh, is this your baby or are you, like, the nanny or something? Right, right. I'm like, it's almost like I'm waiting for it because I'm like, it's the same with my nephew. (laughs) He's white. And anytime I'm with him or my dad's with him, it's like, oh, people are going to think he's kidnapped. We make those jokes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) They're going to think you stole him. (laughs) Get with the cops. Uh That scares me. (laughs) I saw this TikTok. I'll have to show it to you guys. But it's this TikTok of this guy's, like, grandma's what is it? It's like when you're a little bit brown and your grandma sees you for the first time or something. It's like, ah, está bien prietito, ¿verdad? Se prieto. Bien prieto. Oh my so, gosh. prieto, what would you define prieto as? Dark. Because like, moreno and prieto. I think prieto is darker than moreno, right? Uh, yeah, I think prieto is just a little bit slangy, well, but yeah. And they also call me prieta. Preto is black and that mm. you cannot use that for anything else. Really? And preto is the color black? But it's first of all as the color black, but nowadays in Brazil we don't call black people negros anymore. We used to for years. Now they're pretos, and that's just for is it them. politically correct? It's politically correct to say preto. They're preto, and you don't get to call like nowadays. Like people are having a big problem. Like if you call someone morena preta because she's not preta and it's not for her kind of thing and i think that i think mm, it really depends because there's morenas that literally have black parents they just came out a little lighter who knows why i think it's such a difficult it's like a cross you can line so easily yeah. but there is a movement in brazil nowadays that's like trying to like get the colorism out of the conversation Good. or put it in the conversation i guess right. but be like you don't get to call morenos what black people are kind of thing. And I think it's a very interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I, th- I feel like I never dealt a ton with that just because in Guatemala, I don't, there's not a ton of black people. I know there's some like closer on the east side, the east coast, closer to the Caribbean. But for the, for us, it's it's the, the indigenous. It's like, granted, right, they're yeah. darker. So it's like any indigenous thing is like looked down upon. But Okay, so hold on. So in Brazil... Who are the indigenous there? Um, there's a lot of indigenous. Would you consider the black indigenous? No, no. They were slaves brought to Brazil. So the Portuguese? We have our own indigenous people. Yeah. Um, but they still live in their own communities and they're very well respected. However, the... They haven't mixed too much? No. With... Vasta, the... No. That, like, the majority of the population is not indigenous or doesn't look okay indigenous. i was gonna say because i'm we talk it's a more lot like about, a mix of black and white i was okay. gonna say yeah because we talk we have black indigenous and white in our cultures i think mm-hmm. majorly but mm-hmm. i like places like brazil what what's your indigenous like what, who are the indigenous people you know and is that even like a topic i mean no yeah no it's 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 big it's a big topic i remember being little and like they will bring Indians to the school to like teach us about them and like really create appreciation because Brazil, good Brazilians, I guess, but like, <laughs> and good politics are very aware of their needs and their reservations. Like oh, the good. Amazon, like they're very uh-huh. well respected. As a matter of fact, when Lula was elected this time, um, they had, they had like, it was really cool because he walked up into like the, whatever the big building they had to like when he was nominated nominated elected and <laughs> i don't know what i'm talking about but i was watching it on tv and they had like uh like seven people walking behind the president and each of them represented mm. a type of brazilian it was really interesting cool. so there was what? a white gay a like a black person a morena like a white person like every single possible outcome of like a, mm-hmm. a you know an asian person and then there was also an indio like this is what Brazil is about. Like, we have... To, we're everything. Oh, you know, cool. It was really cool to watch, and I was like, that's really cool. And Brazil has always done a really good job at respecting them, but it's not... I think it's different than Guatemala, where you mm-hmm. walk and you see them everywhere. Mm-hmm. In Brazil, it's not like that. You don't see indigenous features everywhere. Because I was going to say, like, maybe... 
I didn't ask the question right, but it's like, are indigenous ours the same as yours, like Native American? So. Yeah, but indigenous? with our own kind yeah, of... Yeah, because you have like... I don't the, even... Like, Amazon. Right. right. It's because they weren't like, there's not civilizations that were big mm -hmm. for them to be recognized like the Incas and the Aztecs. I see. It's okay. not like that. But the entire American continent was populated with Indians. Right. Whatever yeah. civilization it was, whatever yeah. name they had. Yeah. That, um, I think I told you guys last time to go watch um, Latin history for morons. Oh, I, well, I love that documentary. It was so good. To Everyone see needs to go to watch, watch it. it. It'll make you mad, sad, happy, excited, proud. Because John Leguizamo, I think I said his name right, or Leguizamo, I guess <laughs> just to say it more uh, correct. Um, he just starts the conversation. He's basically there to teach you like where you're from, what happened in history, what the real history of Such like cool Latin America was. And it's just like so crazy how kind of what you guys were saying earlier, like, our ancestors were so smart and so clean and so educated and they just had this whole system of how they lived their lives so much better than the other side of the world like they took our cool away it was there and then it they existed. came right. and just but we're bringing it back messed everything up and it just makes you mad because one of the facts that really stood out to me was like so when the Spanish came, conquered, whatever, all the mess they did, they stole our gold, they took it back, and it actually funded the Ottoman Empire, the Spanish Empire, and two other empires more, I can't remember. It literally funded, like, every, the whole empire. The they whole, really took everything from us. They took everything. Well, and here's the thing. Damn. Here's the thought. If we are in that cool, if we are in that great, like they say we're not, why did you come and take everything from us? It's because you saw value in it. There is value, and the mm -hmm. white people saw the value. And and why'd you stay? And I think right. And then, <laughs> and why did like, go home? Obviously, go back. Obviously, you have value. Obviously, it made sense to them. And obviously, they thought Indian women were attractive because no. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> right? So it's like, nobody <laughs> takes something from someone that they don't think has right, value. Right. I'm not going to go rob someone that has nothing. Well, that's because I'm a decent human being as well. <laughs> no, yeah, but... I, again, we could, I think we can talk about this topic forever, but I think it's just important that we start talking about colorism and like, hey, if we're going to call out white people that are racist against black people, we better call out our white Mexican neighbor that is prejudice against our other Mexican neighbor who's slightly darker than him. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what does Google say what colorism is? What is yeah. the definition of colorism? <laughs> I pulled also, it up. I was, I was thinking about how also it's not just within Latinos as well, but like black people as well. Because you've oh, got and Asians, dark skin, like we were saying. light skin. And it's like, right. oh, that light skin. That right. li like, they put, light them skin. On, they put them on like a pedestal before they do. Yeah. Like a black, a dark yeah. black person. Well, and like... Okay. You guys are the same. And you're like, the same. That interview with Julia Fox that I told you guys about that she Oh yeah. She's so white, but even her like she said that she's suffered racism because she's not white American. She's white Italian. Italian. Yeah. So it's like even that, like even though the color of the skin was the same, just the fact that she was white but from another country, people were racist to her. I just So there's just so Zeno, much to hate nowadays. Zeno what is that? Zeno Xenophobia? I'm not sure. Actually. Just like the hatred towards people that aren't. I guess here. we could have started the episode with the definition of colorism. Okay, I think we did just <laughs> about a little kinda, bit. Kind of. We kind of yeah. jumped into it, but the Google says it says colorism, prejudice or discrimination against individuals with a dark skin tone, typically among of the same ethnic or racial group. And then it has like an example saying colorism within the black community has been a serious emotional and psychological battle. Which you can... Right, because it's light skin black. I mean, yeah. again, any... Even, I mean, again, kind of how I said in the beginning with the Asian culture, right? The Indian culture, they have... Apparently, they've had lightning or, like, white lightning. I'm not saying lightning, but, like, lightning of the lightning. skin. Lightning? <laughs> Part in their shelves since 1975. That's I saw that little fact that it's like they've had their shelves full of stuff to make your skin whiter mm -hmm. since then. Wow. Crazy. That's so crazy. Can a so when a black person a black person can be racist, they they're colorist. Yeah. Against their own race. 
I would agree with that because they it's their hate same race. their own race. And that's a whole other topic, self-hate because of what self you've been told about your skin. Hate. That's huge. That's huge. Because, because what we, we talked about the cops the other like that whole situation oh, with yeah. right? Like um the five cops that violence killed the other against black kid. people, like black cops that are violent against their own people. It's like that's a whole thing. Yeah, I don't know how much of that's like self hate towards like whatever. I think cops are just a whole you know, <laughs> like the ballpark that I I'm not like can't colorism. talk about because I'll get fired. But um, <laughs> I um, oh, oh, self hate, self hate. Yeah. Yes, I came to BYU and there was a couple brown girls that talked to me, mm -hmm. um, like family friends, kids, and they're like, "Don't like think less of yourself." And obviously, this was like it, it, I'm not verbatim, but basically, kind of like. It's gonna be hard out there because you're brown. Like, don't hate yourself, okay? And I was like, what are you talking Wait, who about? Who said that to you? Some brown Some girl. girls, yeah. They were like, and then like someone told my mom, I was like, okay, well, if Stacy doesn't like fit in right away, like, <laughs> it's okay. Like, I was like, what are they talking about? <laughs> but it is kind of true. It like, is true. Like, I remember coming in thinking, like, you guys are so like out of pocket for saying that to me. But then I got here and it is kind of true. It's like, you don't fit in, you like, well, I guess the standard, the beauty standard is right. different. It is. And we know if we would have, like, let's say, been raised but in California, like, it'd be different. But it's right, like... Utah. That, well, it's the extreme <laughs> of all situations. Correct. Which is like... Man, we deserve a medal for living here, honestly. <laughs> but, like, I remember thinking, like, the white boys that love Latinas, like, the white Latinas. They don't like the dark Latinas. And it's like... And it, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, do you feel that one? Yeah, sorry, that was one. I'm so sorry, editor. <laughs> wow, you're punching walls. <laughs> um, and like, yes, that self hatred. I could have like brought that upon myself. I don't think I really ever let it because, again, I told you, I I grew up with a dad that was like, you have pride in yourself, and not just about my skin color, but about everything. My dad was very like, you like fake it till you make it you walk like you own the place and so i i grew up with a, ment a mentality that i was like no one's gonna bring me down and granted like it doesn't always work but like it's worked enough to the point where yeah i don't really care what people say about me i don't care what people think about me because i know i'm a rock star right <laughs> <laughs> anyway but like the self-hate is real and i've heard it also like in the gay community like i've heard like mm. brown gay dudes are like oh well gay dudes only like white gay dudes That's or like so it, and it's so real. It's like we don't appreciate mm -hmm. how cool we I don't know. I, I think, again, it goes back to what we were talking about. Representation matters, mm -hmm. right? So to notch being like a Marvel superhero now, it's like other brown kids are not going to associate themselves with criminals and narcos are like, oh, I'm a bad person. It's like, oh, I can be this person, right? Right. That's why what kind of like, was it um, Chad? He passed away. Black Panther. That's why he's so big yeah. for the black community because like black kids were looking up to a black kind of forever. <laughs> they were looking up to like a black famous. It's so true. And representation. Oh, it I does scream matter. matter. I could scream. You know what it did for me? Cheetah girls. Cheetah girls. Cheetah <laughs> sister. Oh my like, god. <gasps> when I was. That's me right girl. there. <laughs> no, that no. is what did it for me. Yes. Finally, I could be <laughs> the main character. Dude, I was gonna say originally <laughs> Raven because that was it. Right. But then the right. 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 the chokehold. They were that's all so Raven. <gasps> and had on me, me like the white girl Chelsea. Yeah, I was like, she wants to be Latina so bad. She, oh, <laughs> she wants to fit in. Her best friends were Raven. Eddie? Is that his name? Eddie? Well, wasn't she white Latina? Oh, she, she was a redhead. I don't know. Wait, no, are blonde. we talking about the Cheetah Girls or the show? The Cheetah Girls. Oh, I was talking about that. The movie. Raven. Oh, the, the oh, Chelsea. Chelsea's, the, 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 wait, Chelsea's <laughs> Brazilian. The redhead? Yeah. Really? Yeah. She speaks Portuguese. She's Brazilian. No way. I don't know. Yeah, See, love redhead. Love like, her. She's love Latina. Her. No, but she it's so true. It's like no, growing up, yeah. rom coms, our favorite TV shows. Who was the main star? A white blonde. And it's like, Hannah Montana. I, Hannah Montana, Liz McGuire, granted, I love them. Love it. Love them. But like, I never could be anyone in, like, you know when you're little and you're watching TV, like, okay, well, I'm that character and I'm that character. <laughs> yeah, you can With never my cousins, 
they were all white. One was white blonde, one brown hair, one black hair, but they're all white. And it's like, okay, I'm her, I'm her. And I'm always like, okay, well, I guess I'll just pretend to be the, like, blonde one. I guess. <laughs> this, like, unlocks such a memory in my head. Because, honestly, like, I didn't even choose this shirt on purpose. Uh, she's wearing but a power I've always wanted to be, t-shirt. what's her name in English? Bubbles. Okay. For me, it's like, that, that's... I made that up. Am like, I right? It's bubbles. Okay. It's bubbles. Okay. <laughs> For me, I've always wanted to be her, but I've never allowed myself to choose. Like, you know, when you play with your friends, mm-hmm. like, I can't choose her because no. she's... I look the literal opposite of her. Like, and they, w- my friends would not, well, you can't be her. I have to be her because I'm one. I'm like, well, okay, there's no one left for me. I guess I have to be <laughs> this girl. Her one. But she's mean. I don't want to be her. It's not about the looks. It's about the personality. Oh, I'm bubbles on the inside. <laughs> exactly. And I've always hated that. Cause, yeah. You know, when you play mm-hmm. with your friends, you they claim the the character that you want to be and you're left out because there's you're no left character. Out. I mean, like the Disney princesses. Who do we have growing up? Mm-hmm. Pocahontas. Bro, I that had to be. I, I, I was, but then Tiana came out, and that was. But that obsessed. was. We were literally teenagers at that point. Yeah, but then yeah. I started feeling. It was like, too late. Oh, it was too late. We didn't get to be the princess. I guess yeah. it helps a little bit. The but, only yeah. one that like we could have been was Esmeralda from oh, yeah. The Hunchback, and to this day, obsessed but, with her. Yeah. To this day, I want to be a gypsy, even though yeah. apparently gypsies are looked down upon. To me, gypsies were always cooler yeah. because of her. Because of her and Shakira. And Shakira. <laughs> Like a gypsy. Yeah. <laughs> right. I'm like, no. that's what I want to be. I do remember <laughs> a one, a shout out to my grandma. She, I love her. So I'm my grandma's favorite. Sorry, Jen, if you're watching this. Um, I'm my grandma's favorite. And one, I don't know if it was for Christmas or my birthday or something, but like Barbies were the, the thing for us when we were little. My grandma got me a brown Barbie with curly hair. I've never seen mm. a brown Barbie. I was in love. Granted, I wasn't a Barbie girl. I wasn't a girly that played with Barbies, but I was so happy that I finally had that Barbie mm-hmm. that had brown skin. Yeah. And I think slowly, like, representation has become a... It's becoming more mainstream to have people of all colors, sizes. Bro, let me see a chubby Latina be the center of a rom-com. Yeah. Not the fit, beautiful, like, size four jeans Well, and the thing girl. is, when they are, it's because they're funny. It's like, it's a body right. person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not the looks. Right. It's never because of that. It's like, yeah. uh, because of the personality. Yeah, I yeah. guess, and that's something that we've wanted to talk about too, right? How we've been told, like, oh, you know, don't get too fat or something. I mean, it's not even like has to do with like all, all our culture. It's just as a, I think as women, yeah. but also like our cultures are kind of messed up when it comes. I to I think that. it's a little heavier. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit more rough. Intense. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> but like it's true and like and I, I, again it goes back to the self-hate problem that we have within our communities like the experience that that person had at going at the beach like right. he wouldn't have why did he have to go home and scrub his skin you know what I mean and it wasn't because he didn't like it I don't think it was more like he was self conscious he didn't want to hear what people were going to say next day at school Ugh. I mean you, I mean, yeah I guess maybe I saw that Kids as self-hate like, too. I don't know it kind of is see. yeah I think it, it yeah it, well, I'll never really understand what he was really thinking but I saw this other TikTok that's like Mexico when another Prieto makes fun of another Prieto because they're more Prieto. Yeah, for real. And it's like, what? What are we doing? So, and I- even like those memes of like when a when a Mexican with like blonde hair and blue eyes look at like when when you have a conversation with a Mexican that has blue eyes, how they look at you. It's like. <laughs> have blue eyes like they make it so and it's so true i've noticed that before Mm. when you talk to like brown people latinos but they know that they're the white latinos and they have blue like outstanding blue eyes they make sure that you notice you're not special because it's so annoying it's like okay you're not special okay (laughs) isn't that actually like a cell mutation Uh, correct also they have to wear sunglasses because their eyes are too weak for the sun (laughs) come on we don't hate on on the blue we love the blue eyes but you can't just make yourself feel like you're better than your own people just because you came out with blue eyes right and that goes to like what we were talking about mejorando la raza like why do you think you are like oh i'm like the good type of mexican because i'm lighter you know so self-hate all of that stuff honestly can be fixed but like you said it's gonna take time and it really just starts with us like talking about about recognizing that 
calling it out when it's like happening mm -hmm. most likely within our families at first Honestly. Honestly. that's where it starts and it all starts in the home mm -hmm. yeah and i think also push for that representation any everywhere you know because mm -hmm. the slowly that will pop that will help heal our communities our cultures our people to like okay i can be good i can be smart i can be i have i can have success in this life like Again, I don't know what life and is like. And you're in deserving. Mexico. Exactly. And I think that's what it comes down to. A lot of people that suffer colorism, they get to a point where they start believing that they don't deserve as much as someone that's white. I think it, I think that's the real problem because when you when you accept that you don't deserve as much, that's where the problem really is. Right. No. Like because haters are gonna hate. You cannot let yourself you can't. fall. You because can, if be you do so, in, in, you're doing that for your kids, right? Like the right. rest of your generation, right? Like you have to stand strong because you can't. You're not doing it just for you. You can't not let other people tell you, you don't deserve and like believe that. Yeah. Because then you start acting like you don't deserve, and then people will start treating you like you don't deserve because you act like you don't deserve. Yeah. Dang. I guess <laughs> that's deep. I know. Oh, just wait, let me think about this. One more thing I thought about before we finish here. But there's this kid in our neighborhood. He was adopted. And he's like, he's black, but he's really dark black. And he was adopted by a white family. He didn't know he was adopted until he was 12. Wait, I'm sorry. He was brown and got adopted he's by black. He's black and got adopted by a white family, didn't know he was adopted? Yeah. Didn't know how his parents had cost a lot of therapy. Well, okay, but like, how do you not? Like, that's what I'm saying. Black and white's a little different, physically looking. Well, I mean, you hear that saying like, "Oh, I don't see color," which that's a whole other thing. But are we just we're born not even noticing those differences? You know right. what I mean? Until you're told, yeah. yeah. Until you're told, oh, they're black, they're Mexican, they're dark. Don't get that dark. Like, it's so crazy the innocence that we could like have. We. Or that, that we just destroyed by st stupidness of humans, you know. No, and we we believe everything mommy and daddy say. Exactly. Like at least when we're really little, we I think for the ages zero to eight is when we're like that. Those are when we're developing ourselves the most, and it's like we will remember those things that our parents taught us, and it's like yeah, maybe it might be too late for our parents to teach us new things, but it's never like we're gonna have kids one day. Right. You're having kids right now, and it's like again back to what I was saying earlier. It's like it's so important that we break that cycle. Yeah, that we do not call people certain names that we don't look down upon people that are darker than us that it's in in the we have to be so conscious of it because even the slightest little things are like microaggressions that we need to be careful of right so and we will mis yeah. make mistakes i think it's just important right. to recognize like oh i probably shouldn't have said that or i'll be careful about that next time um because again for you not to know that you're adopted like he's black and they're white and like oh like i never noticed a difference you know what i mean yeah. like, like how, tarzan how pure do you have to be in your head to <laughs> not see i love tarzan I, like tarzan <laughs> i love tarzan gorillas are not my parents <laughs> yes they are that's your mama exactly but that's your mama but um <laughs> but i think it's just <laughs> tarzan <laughs> um what was i gonna say yeah i guess just to wrap things up i don't know if you guys have anything else to say uh, the last thing I have to say is that this is a brown community right you are seen you're heard and talk, come talk to us like yes I think we've both the three of us have gotten to a point where we're proud and so we're proud. like we're not feeling what a lot of brown people feel just because we and we will stand up for our brown friends right right exactly our brown and sisters. White friends too. of course obviously <laughs> but it's course. all it's all like personal work <laughs> yeah. we have to do yeah right it starts with you like you telling yourself i am deserving whatever they're telling me it's their own projections and their own insecurities mm -hmm. and uh, anyway so what i'm really trying to say is that like that this is this is the podcast like this is why this we is we, this? we are brown and we have come together yeah. with, to build each other up and to share our experiences that have gotten us here because yeah. we have gone through experiences yeah. that have like hurt us and made mm -hmm. us stumble and we've had to learn from them well I, yeah. i've told you guys right like when i first came up with my instagram handle my senior oh, year, twenty the OG Brown Senior Dad. <laughs> twenty twelve. I was literally making Instagram. I was like, what should I name it? Right? You've been Brown Senior Dad for this long. That's yeah. crazy. That's cool. More than ten years. I just use my name because I'm boring. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just remember at that time. I don't know if maybe that was the trend at the time to make it cool and like yeah, interesting. Maybe, yeah. 
Because I think afterwards is when people just used their names. They didn't do anything like funny or yeah. funky. So I just remember looking at it. I'm like, what should I do? And literally, it just popped into my head. I'm like, brown mommy. I said that. I was like, no, that's not bad. That's not good. Mamacita. I was, I, was like, mamacita. I was like, no, that's like weird. Or we would have been the brown mamacitas. <laughs> That's not, that's not a bad name. That's not a bad name. Well, I, mean, I guess, Brand. yeah, but for like, <laughs> an eight, for like an 18 year old girl, I was just like, oh, man, it's kind of yeah. too much. And I was like, well, Senorita, right? Brown Senorita. And it just stuck. And then I had my uncle, who is American, he's like, why do you have to be like Brown Senorita? They're like, why brown? Like, why do you want to tell people you're brown? I was just like, uncle, deal. Like, look at me. <laughs> like, why would why I try would to I, hide it? It's not gonna be white, senorita. I, I'll <laughs> say, I, I don't know. I've been blessed in my life to never be ashamed of my color. I never felt like, oh man, why am I brown? You know what I mean? Um, if anything, I was just like, why am I not darker sometimes? Uh, yes, every summer. <laughs> um, every day. Yeah, so life. it's just like, hopefully this message will, if you're struggling with your own skin color, which is a, true and real struggle like just see how many good things come from that and just right. your ancestors the history everything that they've gone through to be where you're at right now i believe mm -hmm. and we have access to all the same opportunities like we i don't know i guess like you said we have a community that we need to take care of and it'll start with us and just be proud to be brown and you know if you're of the lighter skin tone obviously be proud and I love freckles. If I had freckles, like, I would have to be lighter to for my freckles to show <laughs> I feel. It's like, just embrace your skin color. Embrace who you are. Go out to the sun if you want to. You know? I, I don't know. I don't know what else I to say. I love that. <laughs> I love that. And honestly, sometimes, like, expecting other people to finally get it, to make the change for you, for, you know, white people to start appreciating black people, to start appreciating brown people they will never unless we start appreciating ourselves yeah and that goes like with anything in life like if you think about like romantic relationships like if you don't value yourself your partner is not gonna value you mm -mm. you and you you can spend the rest of your life being like please treat me like this do this for me like you can spend the rest of your life begging the other person to treat you a certain way but if you don't show them how you deserve to be treated by treating yourself that way they're never gonna see it. You're it the one that sets every... your own standards. Right. You're the one that allows right. certain behaviors to happen. And if yes. you don't appreciate your skin color or your heritage or whatever, then you're not Fight gonna care that. if someone else does too. Yeah. So that's why you have to yeah. be like, this is, I respect myself this much, you have to respect myself, right. me that much. Right. I love myself this much, you have to love me and that much. And it's like, this is why I love myself. We will not accept anything less than. Yeah, yeah you can never spend the rest of your life hoping other people will treat you in a way you feel are not proud of your color you feel right. to make others feel good about themselves either um granted i am very aware that sometimes it's hard for you to fight back yeah i get it i get that sometimes you're put into situations where it can be dangerous mm -hmm. to like show your show that you love yourself in, in many other ways right mm -hmm. when you're like in danger right yeah. like with cops or like obviously slavery it's a whole different thing like yeah you really couldn't fight back because mm -hmm. you just yeah. couldn't fight back mm -hmm. sometimes people really do take everything away from you to the point that you can't even open your mouth and say i love myself yeah. right i get it I, I understand that that happens but there's also so much work that can happen yeah. on the other side of yeah. things where freedom does exist mm -hmm. and i think today we are in a society where we're allowed to and yeah. I know there's difficulties. I understand that. And yeah. sometimes it's hard. But I think it's time that we start acting how we want to be treated instead of... And it's and it's it's sometimes a lot easier when you surround yourself with people that can help you, that mm -hmm. support you. And I think that's why I'm really grateful for you guys because... And I feel like I say this all the time, but it's, I, it's <laughs> not any less true. How grateful I am that I have found girls that that build themselves up that I like how I want to and that we build each other up and we support each other and we have like come together because of these like common experiences so find your people like mm. find those people that love you because there are like everybody is worth loving and if someone doesn't love you then pff, get them out of your life they don't bro <laughs> like that is a waste of time to let people that do not appreciate you into your life that is a waste of time yeah don't do it. Don't do it. Find the people that love you because there are so many. 
Yeah. I know I have a lot of people that love me, and I love a lot of people. And so, love cures everything. <laughs> Cheesy, but if you really think about it, it's I want true. to share a poem with you guys. Oh, oh are we gonna snap? No, I'm not. we're gonna cry. <laughs> you know how they, like are you ready? snap at poem Are you ready? Club? This is the this is the poem. <laughs> I can't do it. That's so Why? silly. <laughs> Wait, <say it>. Okay. <clears throat> Wait, just come, come in. Okay. I can't. Do, I can't do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. It was. It's. It's funny. It's funny. Oh. Ready? <laughs> Esa negrita que va caminando. <laughs> Esa negrita tiene su tumba. <laughs> Oh, wait, you have to read this right because no, I'm not going to understand. You know Celia Cruz? It's Celia Cruz. What it's the that? song. La Negra Tiene Tumba. Azúcar. Azúcar. Anyway, no, I just. Okay, that was supposed to be a joke. It was supposed to be a joke. I'm kidding. I'm not reciting a poem, crazy. <laughs> I was so not be that like, vulnerable. Okay, let me get myself to cry. Uh, no, I would never ever be that vulnerable. Um, but what no, song is that? La Negra Tiene Tumbao. And well, I wanted to bring her up really fast just because, one, I love Celia Cruz. She is an Afro Latina. It's mm-hmm. February. We're celebrating like Black History Month. And that is part of our history. Yes. Like, Latinos do have Black History. And so, um, I love her. And she stood up for us mo- morenas, you know? And. There's a lot of music, actually. Like, sometimes I hear songs and a guy is, like, rapping about una morenas, and I'm like, that's me. They talking about me. <laughs> but um, I just want to bring her up because I super admire her, love her. Okay, I'm going to have to Was an to idol song. for me. Do you remember the music video of that, that song? Oh, I remember sure. when I was younger, and I was like, because <gasps> it's, this, it's this black, skinny girl. I will say that I think she's, on, like, light black skin tone. She's light skin. And she's like naked, but they like pixelize her private parts. And she's wearing like a long raincoat, and she's just walking down the street, and everyone's it's staring at her. And she's just like, mm, "Yes, that's how it makes me feel some type of way." I'm like, I'm, "I'm coming." That should be like our theme song. Oh, I'll play this on a reel or yeah, something. Yes. Okay, not me telling my ideas already. <laughs> anyway, that's it. That's what we have for you all tonight. Um, be brown, be proud. We love it. It truly is. So beautiful. Don't this, forget that. This might be a topic that we'll probably revisit in the yeah, future, I mean, I'm sure. Something something. There's so much to, to unpack. Yeah, a lot. But we're always grateful for your support and thanks for listening. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.